moving from one place to another but why what's the need to move definitely there have been a lot of reasons attributed to it and that is where we study migration so movement across either a national boundary or across the international boundaries would be considered as migration UN that is United Nation explains a permanent place of residence if a person is staying there for one year or more but there are factors that help people come into a region on the other hand there are factors that help people move out of a region so those are known as the pull factors or the push factors now what are the pull factors definitely let's say i have a company here with which is providing good perks good residents higher job perspectives a very decent environment and better standards of living a person would definitely think of joining the company so that is a pull factor on the other hand what is a push factor let's say i am in a backward region of a country and there are no basic infrastructural facilities there is lot of intolerance within the people there is no stability no political stability there are social upheavals that are there if there is lack of uh, lack or shortage of housing facilities low income levels if there is a natural disaster that has occurred all of these are things would which would help me to move out of the region and those are known as push factors so similar when you are trying to understand any of the subjects in science where you are talking about the forces where you have the push forces and the pull forces the attractive forces and the repulsive forces similarly in geography you have migration and that works on the push pull forces coming on to the type of migration we have two basic criteria voluntary and involuntary voluntary is where i am willing to move because i am getting better opportunities better living conditions better perks and no doubt a better atmosphere a bigger city might be so that is a voluntary migration i have a free choice a free decision because of which i am trying to move to another region on the other hand there is involuntary migration which is i can say in other words a flow forced migration this forced migration is a uh, could be well understood with movement of slaves from, from africa to american continent you had lots and lots of slaves that were put up in ships and taken from across the atlantic from the regions of africa to american continent similarly you had a lot of asians which were thrown out under the dictatorship in uganda that was seen so these kind of forced movements it can be due to political upheaval it can be due to a natural disaster for example chernobyl so chernobyl is a very good example of a uh, of a human uh, or a environmental catastrophe we could say where there was a forced migration or an involuntary migration people were not willing to move out of the region but they had to move out because there was no other option similarly if we talk about refugees across the globe with forced migration what happens is there is higher probability that a lot of people would be moving out without any future uh, that is known and jordan has nearly 5 lakh refugees that are there in one of the biggest single camps known as zatari where you have more than 1.2 lakh uh, syrians which are part of refugee camps there now with such high amount of refugees there has to be a kind of understanding that these refugees are because of involuntary migration they are not voluntary they are not freely choosing to be a refugee as simple as that now considering the fact that one in every four of the refugees across the globe is afghan so definitely you have a lot of refugees moving out from the regions of afghanistan 
If we talk about the developed versus the developing regions, we consider this as a north-south divide. The regions which are developed are called as north. The regions which are developing are called as south. If we look on to the north-south, the north-north and the south-south balance, what is the kind of balance that we understand? You have nearly 35% migration that occurs from developing countries to developed countries. You have nearly 6% migration that flows from developed countries to developed Developing countries and that is might be most oftenly in the form of uh, guidance tours or uh, kind, kind of consulates, analysts, workers who are trying to analyze the situation in the developing nations. You have nearly 25% migration which occurs from a developed country to another developed country and nearly 34% migration from one developed country, one developing country to another developing country. Whenever you have the movement that takes place, there is barriers. Now, these barriers could be lack of money, lack of awareness, lack of uh, political or lack of legal requirements, we could say. It could be uh, visa issues, it could be passport issues across international boundaries when we talk about. And definitely opportunities. So, when you have opportunities, and there is lack of opportunity it's a definite barrier from the country of origin to the country of destination or the region of destination we understand this migration pattern now where does this migration flow it could be because of gaining higher education so people looking out moving out to get higher education better education over the years, we have seen more of labor migration from a developing country to a developed country. International students have been going up. Similarly, you have kind of curb on the illegal migration process that is taking place. And over the years, this migration process has increased. Now, if we talk on to a very simple example of the spread of SARS versus the spread of coronavirus, we can simply understand that at that point of time, relative number of migrants across the globe were less. However, with over the years, those migrants have increased and therefore the spread to a, huge, uh, to a larger number of countries could be witnessed. Now, this whole process that we are trying to understand is because of better transport network, better infrastructural facilities, higher communication that is seen, more mobility of the people and better awareness that is seen. So, there is a kind of movement that occurs in China. For example, if we take a picture of China, we understand there is a huge amount of rural to urban migration and that is mainly on the factory floors. So you have nearly 150 million people which are moving from rural area to urban areas in China. Similarly, if we look on to Brazil, in the northeast, you have the Amazon rainforest and in the southeast, you have the coffee fazendas. What happens is the movement from the northeast to the southeast because southeast is relatively well developed higher living conditions better job opportunities better job perks and here you have more or less a kind of equatorial rainforest with basic primary activities that could be means of subsistence so todaro's todaro's model is very very important to understand this rural urban migration scenario he believed in a kind of model where there are few things that are very, very important. First is economic incentive. If there is an economic incentive, definitely a person would think of switching because when he is switching, he has to consider few things. First is the travel cost that he would have to bear. The next important thing that he would have to consider is he is leaving behind his family might be. So, he will have to provide some basic income to the family and his subsistence income in the city as well. So what are the factors that help person move from a rural area to an urban area? It's not the urban wage rate, but it is the expected urban wage rate. A person is expecting that if I'm moving to an urban area, this is what I should get or this is what I would get. So profitability of employment is very very important to understand whether you have a decent movement in a 
urban area rural area to urban area was one of the theories propounded by todder todaro and todaro while talking about this criticized the existing dualistic theory which focuses on agricultural areas manufacturing areas which was done by lewis and uh, domar or uh, harold and domar or lewis and they were trying to focus on surplus labor talking about the subsistence wages or turning points he focused on when you have a surplus land you would have the labor that would be surplus and then you would have the capital surplus and this would be the scenario when a person is unable to find a permanent job in an urban area because of which the wages in the urban area would go down still a person who is migrating initially on a temporary basis would look out for a permanent opportunity in the urban area and in that process he would try to settle up in an area where there is higher opportunity so this whole picture focuses on moving from the areas of lower opportunity to the areas of higher opportunity with better economic incentives better profit margins and earning differentials if the earning is same in the rural area versus an urban area there is no point of migration as obvious as that what happened by the end of 1960s there was rapid urbanization and this rapid urbanization created huge number of urban centers across the globe a lot of migration started to take place from the rural areas to the urban areas but in this process there was urban unemployment that was getting created with higher poverty levels more of unemployment and more pressure on trade unions a uh, nationalist government was putting pressure on the enterprises and this whole thing or this whole scenario was further reducing the wages or the minimum wages that were there to protect the laborers in the urban area so what todaro tried to explain was it's only because of the earning differential and an expected earning wage that people is that people are trying to move out of a rural area to an urban area but as soon as that would stop there would be a deep population trend or a moving back or a reverse trend that would start and people will start to move back from the urban area to a rural area so probability of employment is one of the key aspects that he focused on now what is depopulation and counter urbanization depopulation is decline in the population of an area it can be because of out migration it could be because of some natural disaster that has happened or any other reasons but the idea is the whole of the population here starts to decrease however counter urbanization is when you have a rural center and an urban center population is moving towards urban area but this urban area is not sustainable it's not able to maintain this huge amount of population moving into the area the ba the basic facilities suffer the infrastructure is pathetic you do not have good decent living conditions as happened during the industrial revolution in britain and there was a huge increase in the number of crime cases that were reported and this is what gives a thrust back to moving people to help move people back to the rural areas and this is called as counter urbanization so what we understand is a move where the social services are cut there is out migration what happens in the rural area is only the aging or the old population the geratic population that remains on the other hand urban area is flooded with youth population the wages tremendously go down there is cut in the basic services which further prompt this youth to move back to the uh, rural area so that is how we understand the pattern of depopulation and uh, counter uh, counter urbanization now talking about migration we have three things a place from where the migrant originates a place where he moves which is the destination and finally the migrant himself now what are the benefits the pros and cons of each of those we would be understanding those so positive negative positive negative and positive negative that's how we will move now what is the impact on origin since let's say this is a place from where people are moving out the unemployment problem would be released you would have more movement or uh, to the 
developed areas or to the destination and here there would be reduced burden on healthcare, reduced burden on education. Since there is a empty void that is being created here, you could have new skills that could come into these region and then again you would have a ease on the unemployment scenario as we have already discussed. But this origin would have certain drawbacks with it. Since people are moving out, you would have only the old population that would be left. The young population is no more there. Agricultural output would definitely be impacted because there is no one to take care of it. And once the people move out, the traditional values or the roots of an individual, the cultural roots are slowly and gradually lost. On the destination hand, you have reduced labor cost, a lot of people coming in, ready to work at a lower cost. You have better skills that are taken into account, a cultural diversity that is seen, more of youth population that is taken into, uh, into the city. But this would bring in overcrowding. There would be uh, a lot of fight for housing, living conditions, job scenario would slowly and gradually worsen off also you would have higher pressure that would be seen on the ethnic balance so there would be a scenario where you would have issues related to loss of cultural values loss of traditional values that could be seen and this would bring in negative impact onto the environment for the migrants perspective he is looking only for higher wages, better living condition, better health facilities, better educational opportunities, more choices that he can see. But his negative aspects is might be he is moving alone. So he is leaving his family back. He is getting cut off from the roots, from the traditions. The cultural linkages are slowly and gradually lost. And those are some of the key uh, negative impacts that a migrant faces and sometimes there is a kind of uh, process which makes it hard to assimilate oneself to a new environment and a new region. The next important thing is cost and return migration. Now this is further interesting. Let's say when I'm trying to move from a rural area to an urban area, what are the things that would motivate me? If the skill is you, uh, if the youth is a skill, definitely there are more viable opportunities. You have better living conditions, better support cost, and there is also migration for educational purposes. However, when you are moving back to a rural area, you are bringing in more remittance. You are trying to bring in more educational institutions, more jobs, more skills in the rural area and moreover change the attitude in which the people are living in the rural vicinities. Now, this is something, a kind of common migration patterns that we are talking about. But a very recent example of involuntary forced migration, we could say, is climate migration. Because of climate change, you have huge number of migration that is taking place and the coastal countries, the small island developing states, what are known as SIDS, are those which are worst affected because of it. For example, if we take an example of, let's say, the uh, island of Lakshadweep, you have Pali too, which has recently submerged. Now, with this coastal areas getting submerged, what happens is there is a threat onto the people and there is a kind of forced migration that makes them uh, or forces them to leave that island and move on to another place for livelihood. Similarly, there is a kind of huge migration which is seen on the south of America where you have huge migration coming in from Mexico. This is because you have a lot of demand for farm workers. You have proximity, nearness or closeness to the border. That is one of the regions, uh, reasons. And then you have a well-established Mexican community with Spanish as one of the prevalent languages in most of the urban areas in America. And that's where you have a good thrust for Mexicans to enter into America. Now, this was a quick introduction about migration, the push-pull theories, the Todaro's model. We would be covering many interesting sessions. If you have any doubts, any questions, feel free to post those in the comment below. Have a wonderful day.